I'm completing my bachelor's in mechanical engineering and planning a master's in China. Is landing a job at Riot realistic and what skills should I develop? Or should I consider a different master's field? I notice few job openings at Riot China. I'm a master in law, fluent in Mandarin and English, have no video game industry experience. Um, so I'll say with any company in the games industry, I would not set your like only goal as being there. So if you're like, the only place I want to work in the games industry is Riot Games, um, I think you're setting yourself up for a bad time. And that doesn't mean you couldn't get a job at Riot. Riot hires people at times, surprise, surprise. It's just a very competitive place, as are many companies. And sometimes it just comes down to luck. Like, were you the right person for the right job at the right time? Right? Like, that is that is just a very real thing. So when I, whenever someone's like, I want to work at Riot, the first thing I'll say is, great, set that goal. Definitely shoot for it. Try for it. You could definitely make it. But also make sure that, like, you're okay working at other places as well. Especially since one of the best ways to get into a game company is to work at another game company, ironically, because then you get experience there and then you can use that experience on your resume and talk to it when you're like applying to another place, right? So, and this is like applies to industries in general. It's like, if you want to work at this one place, one of the ways is to apply and hopefully you get in. Another way is to work at a place that's a bit easier to get into and then use that experience to work at the other place, right? So I'll start with that is that um, if you want to work at Riot, go for it, shoot for that. But um, just noting it is very hard. It is very competitive. Um, we're no longer in the spot where like it is easy for like some random college student who's smart and has no industry experience to just get into Riot. Um, it can happen. It can definitely happen. There's, there's designers we hire when we have like in uh, entry level designer hires, which like that happens. Um, we have, um, if you're a master in league, one thing I would always be looking out for is um, when the playtest team opens up. So we have something called the game analysis team. Uh, Hydra Zenith is on it. And um, every once in a while, they'll hire uh, for specifically high ranked players. They're looking for high ranked players who are smart and good to work with and can give good feedback. And it is a great entry spot into the games industry. Um, and what that game analysis team does is the people on that team are tasked with uh, testing things like League of Legends at a very, very high level and giving feedback and thoughts to designers and other teams about like what's working, what's not, stuff like that. It's like super cool. Um, and so it is a great, great entry point into the industry when they're hiring, but they are not always hiring. Um, and also if you've noticed the state of the games industry right now, Riot right now is not hiring for that much, <coughs> which, which is not the best, right? So, um, but definitely keep your, keep your eye on things like the game analysis team if there's ever any um, openings for that. Um, in terms of like what you should study, uh, there's a lot of different things you can study. Um, you know, uh, I'll say that like to work in the games industry, you do not necessarily need a game design degree. I think there's this kind of misunderstanding that like to be a good game designer or a, a good artist or whatever, you need to like literally get a game a degree in games. I think one thing that games degree teaches you is actually how games are made. And that can be really, really valuable. But um, also like you get a job if you had like an economics degree or a sciences degree or a writing degree. It just depends on like what you're looking for, what field you're interested in, like what you're trying to do. Um, games companies really love data scientists. Data scientists are invaluable to games companies because it helps them like understand their players. So there's like openings for things like that. So if you're wondering like what kind of degree you need, I would encourage you to go to a few games company websites um, and see what they're hiring for um, and like what roles you would want and see what the, they're mentioning in terms of like things you need to be in, be able to be in that role. And like that can help you like determine what you might want to study. Um, another thing to be doing if you do want to work in games when you're in college is play a lot of games. That's like, that's like a no duh, but like, yes, I'm giving you permission to go have some fun. I'm giving you permission to, instead of studying every night, go play Baldur's Gate 3 and try to romance Carlock. Um, like, like you can do that, you can do that, right? Like, that's okay. The important thing though, is that when you're playing a lot of games, you should be playing those games with a, with a, with a, with a desire to understand them based on whatever field you're like thinking of being in, right? Like, you know, when you're playing a game, like look at that game and ask yourself, why is this game good? What are the things that are making it good? Also, why does this game suck? What are the bad things about it that you might want to fix? Stuff like that is like worth worth pursuing there. Um, try, look, not everybody is a Rizzler here, daddy depression, okay? Some of us, some of us are single forever in and out of game. 
So yeah, sometimes you just gotta try your best. Um, <coughs> but uh, yeah. Um, and then the other thing is make games, which is like, this one's another like, no duh. But I think a lot of people don't realize that they can just go make a game, right? You're like, how do I make games if I'm not hired by a game company? It's like, there are so many ways you can make games out there. There's game jams. There's learning how to make games with like coding. Um, there's modding tools. Like one of the better ways to make games is to go mod a game. Like you can mod Fortnite right now. You can make games in Roblox. Like um, <clears throat> you can mod Skyrim. There's a lot of games out there that you can like just go make. Like Lethal Company, from what I understand, that like pop off game that did super well is it was made by like a young game designer who, who got his uh, start in Roblox. And he was a Roblox game designer, and he, then he, you know, took that and ended up making Lethal Company. I, th I think that's, like, the thing that he did. But anyways, it's, like, it's just a story of, like, you know, you could do this from so many different areas, right? There's so many different ways you can engage in the games industry. Oh, or not engage, but, like, figure out how to, how to make things. So, yeah, so make games. Go try that. Um, one of the things that um, one of my old bosses told me that I thought was very insightful, this was a test he would do like just a little mental test he would do to understand if someone like had potential as a game designer. And that would be like, uh, someone would come up to him um, and you know, they'd give him an idea about a game they were thinking about or something like that. And then he would give them feedback on their idea or their mechanic and be like, that's cool. Well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about that? And like, let them go on their way. And uh, the mark of someone who was like, maybe like had a lot of potential as a game designer was like, if they actually like thought about that feedback, iterated on the idea and came up with something new or better, right? Cause like sometimes like you'll have an idea and then like someone will be like, uh, that'll work or not work for whatever reason. And you're like, okay, cool, I'm done. I had the idea and I talked about it. But like, um, if you want to be able to game design, one of the things you should always be thinking about is how do you collect feedback, analyze that feedback, and then iterate on your ideas and mechanics to make them better and more improved and, and move them forward. Right, which making games does that. Making a Skyrim mod means that you can make a Skyrim mod and then you can go show your friends and they'll play it and they'll tell you what's cool and what's not cool. And then you can edit your mod and then you can show your friends, right? And it's like, it doesn't even matter that any, if anybody really plays the mod, aside from a couple of your friends, what matters is that you're, you're trying things, you're having people play it, you're learning what's good and bad about it and you're improving it. That's like, that's, um, it's a good start for game design. <laughs> Another note on this all is uh, I want to mention two designers I work with who are very talented. Um, one of them uh, he, um, has just done so many different things. Uh, one of them is the guy who worked on set um, and other things is one of them, the way he got, one of the ways he got hired at Riot is he made a, a, um, a mod for StarCraft II called Storm of the Imperial Sanctum, which was like a Dota-like um, MOBA experience. And he had like lots of cool characters he made in there. And so when he applied to Riot, he was able to like talk about that in his applications because he'd have made this mod. Another guy, I, d I interviewed this guy directly. Um, one of the reasons I gave him a pass on his interview, meaning that like, you know, I talked to him, um, we, we interviewed and I was like, at the end, by the end, I was like, yeah, we should definitely hire this guy. Like he's awesome. Is he made Pathfinder campaigns for his friends and he was able to talk about that. So in his interview, um, he would mention the campaigns he made and he'd mention like how he thought about them and how he designed them and like what he was trying to do. Uh, he, he was just basically a big Pathfinder D&D nerd and he would make things for his friends. And then when he applied to Riot, he was able to talk about it. And that was like, dang, that is, that is really good. That's like a really great way to like learn how to do things. So yeah, just mentioning like making games is a, is a big, big help for getting into the games industry.